I want to bring you a thing. First you take a rag, put it in the bag. Pop, pop. Then you bend your back, put it in the sack. Pop, pop. That's the way you start. It's a lot of fun. Pop, pop. Cotton cake is good and cake is in the bag. And your intro. <laughs> your intro. Your intro. Oh, why, why are you introing? Oh, come on, man. Hey, yo, what's up, man? This is Brother Brother Bear Podcast. <laughs> How about you, boy? This is uh, Shreddy, Shreddy McPants. And I'm Carlos Medrano. And I am Santo Sanch Medrano. And we are here with another episode of the Brothers Bear Podcast, episode 5. And actually, right now, we have two special guests from the Bridgetown Podcast. We have... Kirby! And Louis Perez. Woo-hoo. Yes, sir. We have Kirby and Louis Perez. They are here listening in. We actually, um, me and Shweddy came in to uh, visit my, my little brother at my parents' house. And they were recording in the back cave. So we decided why not just stay and record here. So now we sat through theirs and they are sitting in on our recording. So that's what's awesome. And also, too, um, my older brother is actually uh, driving to... Uh, on his, he's actually on his way right now, so we could record. Um, he just told us to start recording, but I don't know if I told him that we were going to be recording at my parents' house. So if anything, Carlos, uh, you should text him and tell him that we're at mom's house. Uh, actually, my yeah, I'll text him. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So just uh, so yeah. So my my actually my older brother will be showing up in a bit. Um, and yeah. So we're actually going to start recording because as always, uh, Shweddy is on a timeline, so we're just going to start recording. So now. Uh, like actually, to, oh, real quick, I'd like to thank my wife for letting me out of the house again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she has them in handcuffs, doesn't let them leave usually. Can yeah, you? she usually uh, tries to uh, make me look like a, a pedophile. Like, if I look more like a pedophile, she's more comfortable with it, you know? Like, what? <laughs> what? I don't want you with those pants on, you better change them pants. So I put my, you know, my, uh, <laughs> my child rapist pants on. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wow, crazy. Uh, what kind? Of, what do those pants look like? Like oh, corduroy right or what? I'm gonna right step here. out for a bit. Okay. Yeah, these are my fancy pants He's here. here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, cur- so currently, right now, uh, we Carlos is stepping out for a second. So, uh, Kirby filling in. Yeah, if you got Kirby. Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> filling right in. Yeah, so we'll have a... Uh, right, so what you know about Pixar, uh, Kirby? What's yeah, again? Kirby. So what do you, what do you, get, get, get closer. About, uh, get closer. All right, Kirby here, he he's from the, the Bridgetown podcast. This guy is like, if you, you see me compared to Kirby, this guy is like Albert Einstein on films, and I'm like basically like a, a retard at word. This guy overshadows me. He has more knowledge on film than anybody I have ever known. More so than Siskel and Ebert and and uh, Ebert and Roper. Oh, that's the same. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, anybody, you know, Leonard Moulton, you know, um, just this guy, he knows any knowledge. So this guy, you have any questions about a movie, you ask this guy. Kirby's so one of those guys. <laughs> I know we were in Oprah or Roper, so, so tell us what 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 is your uh, what is your favorite Pixar movie? Uh, let's see, uh, somebody to pick from. It's a toughie. Liar. <laughs> uh, I want to say up. Up? Why? Yeah. Just I don't know because like the whole field of it when you know when he was just young and he meets you know the love of his life. Yeah. And then how he just grows up, and then, like, you know, it's kind of like real life where, like, you know, one of them dies off. Yeah. And it's just, that's, like, sad-ass fucking story right there. And then for someone else to come in and brighten up, you know, your life, or, like, you know... That little Asian boy? Yeah, that yeah. little Asian boy. Like, it's like... <laughs> I want a little Asian boy to brighten me up, dude. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I know. I Fat think... Asian kids bring happiness. <laughs> I, I, I think bring the tiredness is starting to, like... Go kick in. Yeah, no. There's nothing I can do about it now. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, like I don't know. I just like the whole feel, like of it. I don't know. It. it yeah, it's yeah. a really big uh, sob story. Everybody loves that one. Grandpa yeah. keys it. No, no, no. My keys? Yeah. Oh, Grandpa. Yeah. Oh, okay. The, uh, oh, special. All right. Well, welcome back to the Brothers Bear Podcast. Here. Uh, we had to move from one spot to the other, so we're here now. 
I hope you guys are up to speed. <laughs> well, they are now. Back to the up uh, conversation here with Kirby. Oh, man. What'd you think, Kirby? Up. No, he did tell us what he thought. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want to hear more, though. This is, yeah. <laughs> you know what? We want you to get in depth. In depth, yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is the critic master here, right? If this guy criticizes your movie, this isn't the bridge it's done. That's just gonna be fucking bomb. No, but I like your reviews. It's like just sweet and short and simple. Oh yeah, it's just it was awesome. It was it was good. <laughs> well, all right. Well, five, five Kirby's up. <laughs> here, here's just a quick statement. This is um, Kirby's picks of the week, and he's gonna tell us an obscure, rare film that he's watched that is so great that if you chances are you've never heard of it. So this is Kirby's picks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, um, I'll go with, okay, because Lewis has some, like, a little movie game that we do every now and then, and I always suck at it, it's just, like, when we're in line or we're on the road to Vegas, he'll be like, alright, just play the movie game, guys, um, Lewis, can you explain the movie game rules? Okay, <laughs> yes. well, the movie game, that we made up this game when we get bored, basically, someone says a movie, and the next person talks about, uh, whoever actors in that movie, they can say another movie, but you can't say the actor. Just an, an, like another movie, whatever actor the movie. Period. It sounds confusing. Now, <laughs> but yeah, basically that's how it goes. You get three strikes. Um, after the first strike, you get eliminated. So you just keep going. And I'm usually the first one out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Only one time I made it to the finals, and that's because I was throwing out like, uh, let's see, what was I getting them with? I was getting them with like you know like Young Frankenstein, and, you know, um, Blazing Saddles, and all all those movies, but. That's all you know is <laughs> Mel Brooks films? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> and apparently I'm the only one. I was like, what? I was like, you guys haven't seen these? Like, these fucking movies are, like, awesome. They're old school, but, like, I just, like, love their comedy. And, like, I don't know. It's just, like, uh, I, sometimes I find it more funnier than, like, you know, current stuff. So what's your pick of the week? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't say anything. I know. <laughs> he right. just threw it to you. All right, what's that <laughs> game we play? <laughs> Okay, uh, my pick of the week. An obscure, rare film. Independent, maybe. I don't know. Not high-end studio. Okay. An obscure. What would be your pick, uh, Mr. Movie Man? It would be... I was thinking of the movie. Um, Man from Nowhere. I don't know if you guys ever seen it. Oh, I heard of it. I downloaded it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. No. It's in Q. Oh, okay. It's yeah. in Q. Cool. No, yeah, that's a. I, I don't know. I really like that movie. Uh, my friend recommended it to me like a long time ago too. Uh-huh. I think he even lent me the DVD, and I just like months later I ended up watching it on Netflix. There you go. <laughs> so that is Kirby's pick of the week, Watch Man it. from yeah. Nowhere. Well, let's get it by Netflix. Yes, Netflix. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is the section where we give out the great shout outs to anybody or any of our fans or any of our comments. So this is the shout out. Show, show, let it all Alright, we actually just have one shout out this week And this shout out actually goes back to a comment um, That was left from last week it, it seems like it's the same person But they kind of changed the name And I'm going to read off what this <laughs> what this <laughs> comment was said It was from Tommy the Cat 28 this time I think last time it said Tommy the Cat 80 but Tommy the Cat, oh, well, one, you deleted your old comment. Should have left it. It was actually pretty funny, but you left us a new comment. So I'll just read it off. It says, Medea walking into a dark basement, basement being scared. The end. Stupid character movies. I saw Ernest, rest in peace, goes to jail in the theater. I thought it was the best movie ever. Up made me cry too. Good review and insight to the score by Carlos. I am DBS. I mean, no, I am DS. Internet movie data Sanch. And Edgar, you're a funny bastard. You're the next Tom Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Arnold, dude. Who's Tom Arnold? Would be in a movie. <laughs> you don't know who Tom Arnold is? Is his name Tom? <laughs> Haven't you ever seen The Stupids? <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, it was The Stupids. Yeah, that's a good movie, dude. <laughs> what other Tom Arnold movie? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> All right, what is it? Big Bully. You ever seen with Mick, Rick Moranis? One of his like. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know who Rick Moranis is? Oh, oh my gosh! Well, you like Mel Brooks, so you, I'm yeah. assuming you've seen Spaceballs, I'm more, right? Oh yeah. 
Which one Dar- is Darth Vader? Helmet. The, the guy oh, who plays okay. Darth Vader. That's Rick Moranis. I'm really, horrible, also, I'm really horrible with names. All right, so earlier when I... <laughs> yeah, earlier when I was making that joke about Kirby and being like a movie enthusiast and everything, that was, <laughs> I was being horribly sarcastic because this guy... Very horrible. Yeah, he, <laughs> he he's in the film. He films. He wants to get in the industry but has nothing, knows nothing about movies whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of the irony yeah so uh, it's just kind of funny so I thought I'd make that joke yeah um, as you heard he has no idea who Rick Moranis is or uh, or <laughs> Tom Arnold but then again I mean I guess well regardless because of it could could it be age what do you mean could it be age man we're fucking old who knows Tom Arnold man? <laughs> <laughs> well, Rick Moranis I mean you would figure but still I mean he's in Ghostbusters I knew Ghostbusters Honey I Shrunk the Kids Honey I Shrunk the Kids I mean you should know from the Little Giants I mean I said yeah there you go Little Giants I don't just throw in Little Giants but I just I'm in general in general I'm just really horrible with names like well you know what it looks like right yeah 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 all dorky it's you that dude with that face that. yeah yeah with the glasses it's that dude with the glasses it's <laughs> yeah. that guy from that one movie with the glasses <laughs> yeah the nerdy guy so I, that's that's um oh, well right before I actually end the sh- <laughs> I end the shout outs I just want to say shout outs to um all all the all of my friends who've actually been mentioning the fact that they've been listening to our podcast that is um it's just awesome to hear that from from you guys like i mean if anything i just want to say that uh you know feel free to post on our wall on our facebook wall that you listen to the show um i'm more curious to find someone who has no idea who we are they're not in relation to anybody we know uh you know they're like oh there's they're a cousin of one of someone we know like i'm just curious if there's anybody out there who has no relation to anyone we know and happens to download this podcast or listen to it. So, yeah, comment um, on our on our Facebook page. But we or ha- iTunes. Oh, yeah, or iTunes. But I just have a, one. It's not a shout-out, but it, it is a, a fan. Uh, I posed the question that we were going to record, and I thought, you know what, I'll throw out a question out there. So I, I said, you know, if you ask it, we'll read it live, and that's what we'll do every week. If you want us to read one of your questions, read it, and I'll read it live. Well, it's live right now, but it's not live when you hear this. But it would be uh, what we have here is Sarah Salas, and she asked, If your house was on fire, what's the first thing you would grab? So let's go to Shweddy first. All right, well, since I have a wife and kids, I'll scratch that one off because that one's (laughs) obvious. And I'm sure they might be able to have, like, you know... Uh, an ability to take some of the stuff uh, <laughs> themselves. So. All right, so let, let's just... I got three extra hands, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so let me see. Um, let's just imagine their your your kids and and your wife. They're safe. They're like at the the, the in laws or something like that. And it's just you within the house. What would be the first thing you would grab? Like, what would be? Oh, you could only grab one thing. What would you grab? My external hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> right Actually, there, man. It's got uh, all my music. It's got family photos. It's got all the movies that I downloaded for free. It's like treasure, <laughs> man. That's just worth oh. a lot of money, man. <laughs> I just uh, look at it. and I'm like, yeah, it's money. Cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> that you go to jail for one point five. Full to the rim. Actually, two. I got two hands, so I'll take both of my. All right. So you have two hands. You could grab two items. No matter what it is, I mean, it's because this is like a, an exaggerated question. So, like, let's just say you have two hands and this is like a video game world where you just hit TV and you're actually carrying the TV in your arms. So it doesn't matter the size. So two items you would take out. What would they be? External drive and what would be the second item? My other external drive. <laughs> <laughs> the second one. <laughs> the backup of the other one? <laughs> no, well, one of them I have my music and the other one I have my movies. Oh, all right, so, all right. All right. <clears throat> Movies. What? <laughs> Boy, what was Movies. that? What are you doing, though? Never mind. I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> Kirby confused me for a I, second. I was still in sexy, sexy time. With oh Kirby. yeah, he's saying that I. Oh, pedophile, and I have a lot of child pornography. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> movies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that's not the case, folks. We get, we start get, you get a knock on the door. I know. You get a knock like, on the door right here, right now, dude. Because <laughs> it's like one of those things, like, like they take it probably serious. Because I know, like, on Twitter, if you or online, you mention, like, assassination or president or anything within the same line. 
like they they take that serious come knocking on your door so yeah. i'm wondering if it's the same on audio like it's like if you're in the airport and shit and they yeah you just yell take bomb take your pants off <laughs> <laughs> just start the glove on <laughs> They're like, spread them cheeks, spread son. Spread them cheeks, boy. <laughs> I'm going to find that external drive. <laughs> <laughs> Is it here? <laughs> All right. So let's, let's, let's jump on the, the, the same question to Carlos. Two items. What two items would you take? Because you have two hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you... <laughs> like how I added that in. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of a well in a way like I I feel like I'm a hoarder in a way because I keep everything. Yeah. But I mean the the drawer that's right next to I have like I don't know I I I, like the top drawer I I have everything that me and my girlfriend ever had so I have all the our old movie stubs from when we first got together to now all my all my concert tickets are on there like all my collect things that I just collect like from when we were in high school to now is all there so that and then everything that's like from uh notes or anything that i've ever had is all in the drawer, drawer. like all but yeah I, I keep dumb notes in there all the time and i always like read them here and i'm like why do i have this you know? yeah <laughs> and i'd probably be like whip, and get the drawer like if um if you're doing a, like the video game status where i touch it and blip, like, yeah yeah it's, it's i would like, be able to carry that in your inventory <laughs> yeah. yeah uh that I mean, everything else can be replaced in the room, but one thing I know, the, the Power Ranger... Oh, uh, uh, the Dragon Zord? Yeah, I mean, the, the Dragon Dagger? Yeah, the Dragon Dagger. I, I Because, I'm yeah, I just recently got that within the last couple of years, so I wouldn't want to lose that for sure. I get that. <laughs> but I mean, like, everything else, I mean, it's a TV, it's all that. Yeah, I think it's, like, replaceable. It's and replaceable, yeah, that's like, why. I mean, pictures and everything that I've, I've had, all the letters or anything, that I just... You can't replace that, so... <laughs> right is that your computer or outside? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hanging with Mr. Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> He's having his own show. <laughs> He's live streaming this right now. Uh, He's all, uh, he has his own audience laughing in his ear. <laughs> I'm trying um, to be like the guy from Police Academy. <laughs> That's why Kirby's always late for our podcast. He's doing his own podcast. Yes. Um, uh, but I, yeah, that's the only thing. Everything else I know would be able to be easily replaced, except for that. Like, memories you can't get back. Yeah. <laughs> you can't lose that in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but like... Oh, I'm just going to take my memory. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Gondry was able to delete memories. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, like family pictures and stuff like that. That's Memor- what you go for. <laughs> if you're gonna go for anything, go for the family albums because you can't go. Oh, um, this is the 21st century, man. Make sure to learn that. I'm not gonna put it on there. <laughs> I'm old school. <laughs> Polaroid pictures. <laughs> I have it on my. Like, oh. <laughs> it's fun. I love taking pictures. <laughs> keep shaking it. Keep shaking it. It'll show up eventually. Uh, it's so natural. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, dude. oh man. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Sanch? Sanch. <laughs> Santos. Hello, my name is Sanch. I'm we'll calling you Dos Santos. Dos Santos. Uh, <laughs> you I know Dos Santos. Dos Santos. I don't always drink. Too. <laughs> um, I, two items. One, um, I mean, it, I'm just taking off from that because I, I have, oh yeah, an external drive. I have a three terabyte, and I have Ooh, everything boy, backed up. Yeah. All my other external drives. Uh, all the computers, everything's backed up. All the photos, like video clips, all these things, they're all just saved. So, of course, I would take that. And the other thing, I would have to save my box of comics. Um, because, yeah. That box? <laughs> uh, it, it's like, um, you know, when you receive the Staples paper, like in one of those boxes? Oh, yeah, the like comics. Box. Huh? In like a banker's box? A bank? Yeah, yeah I, 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 yeah. I mean, so it's just because, I mean, that, yeah, like, I mean, it's replaceable, but it's just like, I I would have to try to find them and, and buy them, and some of them probably is just like, you know, I wouldn't get the first printing, and I have some first printings there, and that's the thing, yeah, TV, I could find, dude, like, 
You know, like a lot of this. Well, it's kind of hard because I got a lot of cool toys, man. What the hell? Yeah, I ain't actually not game. thinking about it. I was oh, thinking- I got an idea. You know what? No. If it was like a video game, right? I would just take my display case with all my figures. <laughs> there you go. I didn't think about it because I was only thinking my room. But yeah, oh yeah, my, all the comics are in the garage. But still, I just thought about all the like the, all the rare Nightmare Before Christmas figurines I have. Yeah. So that, but that's one touch and that's all. But if it's realistically speaking, I mean, the only thing I would just grab, it, I guess, is the external drive. Because yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, memories are in our mind, but there's like photos that are taken that there's no other way I'd be able to get them again. Like you know, videos from like throughout the years when like birthdays or anything. Like there's a lot of stuff backed up and. Yeah, if my computer burns, insurance will replace it, and I can just drag and drop everything in there. What if there's a nasty solar flare and then it just burns Electricity's out, out yeah. everything? Well, then I got my comics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I got my books. Hey, maybe I should take my books. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing, like, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I got books. <laughs> books, not magazines. Books. <laughs> Hard covers. I got comics. Those are books to me. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's do a little special um, question asked to our guests. Let's see, Lewis. What about yourself? For sure, a guitar, an acoustic guitar. An acoustic guitar? Yes. Was yeah. like your first guitar, or was like? No, just. I can't live without playing music. It's just so like you can just go buy a new guitar, like something I don't that's. No, I guess. It's my first guitar, but yeah, I guess. So. Oh, it is your first guitar? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, it's just I like music. And then they're like, no, okay, it is my first guitar. <laughs> I didn't want to admit it. But yeah. I don't have anything else, but I really think of what. Probably just, like, just the guitar. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's just it. Yeah, yeah. An extra change of clothes, though. Well, maybe. <laughs> clothes that I know it's never going to get again. No, it's probably just that. I think. I'm pretty boring. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what about a Kirby uh, movie collection? <laughs> <laughs> it's the cable guy, and that's it. <laughs> Is it Jeff Fox, really? Like? I had limited edition one, right? <laughs> Deep Blue Sea with Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> that is the ultra rare edition. <laughs> I'm gonna have to make like a clip of just I just edit him in there. <laughs> just like, see, look, yeah, there he is. <laughs> you should do that. Yeah. <laughs> Meme that, dude. We want to see that. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Let's see. I would actually want to take one thing. It would just be my my um my backpack with my all just my the cameras. backpack or is there stuff? No, in it's because uh, in my backpack. Uh, since I'm a photographer, I always carry my cameras, my lenses, my laptop, my mm. external drive, everything in there. So your backpack has all your gear. Yeah. All right. And, and then I'll document my house frame. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, you still have two hands free because you could have that on your back. Oh, oh, hey. oh, oh yeah. no. Why didn't we think of that? That was the smartest thing. <laughs> Fill backpack, put it on, still got two free arms. Well, I still got my kids and my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I can't one up all you guys. <laughs> so you got four backpacks. Yeah. <laughs> But like, I, I, don't, I don't think I would take anything else, really. Yeah. Uh, my, my my brother rips up all my clothes anyways. <laughs> uh, all my photo albums and everything, I already have photo albums. Um, even if I didn't have my external on me, like in my backpack, I still wouldn't really mind leaving it because uh, I actually back up all my photos uh, online, full, full everything, so... So I don't ever have to worry about like photo, taking photo albums because I already had everything backed up either are, way. Are, you, are your glasses? Like, Shut up, alright? They're foggy. <laughs> yeah, why are your glasses all foggy? I don't know. <laughs> 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 it's because I'm listening to uh, Kenny, well, listening. Kenny G or what? <laughs> <laughs> sexy time with Kirby on the by himself. <laughs> with the crowd all over. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the laugh track going. You know? I know. <laughs> I'm gonna take out my glasses. That's why he's doing it on the show. <laughs> it's giving me away. So yeah, so that is our uh, question and answer time, and that's the end of our shout outs. So last week we left off with uh, it was our special Pixar episode, the Pixar story with the Brothers Bear podcast, and we <laughs> only got into Up and Toy Story one. So we probably well, not really, but we. I did bring up... Well, it was just a mention of the oh, other yeah, flicks, but in reality, our full discussions... Like, we covered Up, and we covered 
Toy Story. And you know what? Actually, we did we did go into Wally. You went into Wally. Uh, mm-hmm. So I mean, I mean, if we go into Wally a bit, that's fine. But I think for one, we should no more no more talking about really Toy Story. And with Up, there's only I'm just gonna make one comment about it, just because it was brought up during the discussion online. Um, was it that whole transvestite thing that I was talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, well, I mean, it, it was kind of why you brought that up. I mean, it wasn't about transvestites, but where it, it was about the, the scene where we were debating about did Ellie lose the baby? Did she lose a child? Or was she not able to have kids? And the one thing was the, the I, I didn't bring this up but the main clue as to what they give is they are decorating a child's room. They're preparing a child's room. She's playing that fool like a fiddle. The whole time. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I can't. I don't know how I'm gonna tell him I got a willy. This <laughs> has been butt penetration the whole time. <laughs> Get into this whole bullshit about oh, when we get married, honey. When we get married. <laughs> Well, there you have it. His sweaty's analysis on top. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't even know what would happen if that came out on the theater. Like, if that whole scene came out like the way he oh my god, I'd be like, what the hell am I watching? I think I'd start crying. <laughs> Why? From, from laughter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All the kids. What's going on? Oh, man. Why does she have a willy? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but that that's really um, that's one of the biggest clues that that hints that she lost a child that she had a miscarriage was she was decorating a room a child's room they were decorating a room and then the next scene they're in, they're at the doctor's office so it's kind of like who starts decorating a room like already a certain way before like they even get pregnant like usually people start doing that after they already know they're pregnant so it's just kind of like one of the hints that I, I feel is just subtle. But they don't really want to tell you because there's like no dialogue, no no sound. All it was was the music the whole time. So yeah, so that's all I want to say about Up. But now let's continue going in because like we said, we promised you. And I know I got a lot of feedback on that episode and it was very positive that a lot of you dug um, our discussion on the Pixar film. So we're just going to go into it. So like we said, we've, we've, we went into sto- Toy Story, the very first Toy Story, and we've gone into Up. So now that leaves us with... <clears throat> I mean, a bunch of other ones. So let's let's just start. <laughs> you know what? Let's just go into it. I actually, um, Edgar, you you a uh, sweaty picks the next film. What 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 film should we go to in Pixar, and then we'll go into? Well, it. let's do with Cars because that's the only uh, really. <laughs> <laughs> Cars? I can't, like recall more than any Cars. Other All right, Cars, uh, the great Cars film from two thousand six. The the thing the thing about this film is it was really like. I mean, they played huge homage to, like, the whole era of, like, the 50s, Route 66, and kind of even, like, what took place at that time when the highways starting to appear. And it was all these little, like, shops and, like, mom-and-pop stores and, like, just, like, the feel of, like, when you would travel from, right, no, was it, yeah, Chicago to... California. Or, no, or was it St. Louis? Well, it, it, yeah, you would... No, it's, well, it's that, that, that song is Chicago to St. Louis. I don't know. Well, yeah, no, it is Chicago. Yeah, Chicago, because St. Louis. No, well, anyway, um, it's from Chicago to Santa Monica. And um, it's like that once all these places went out of business because the highways kicked in, the freeways, and people started taking the freeways before, it was just kind of like, I mean, I wish I lived around that time. And it would just be cool to like, drive and take Route 66. And that's what cars was about like you know and it kind of had that like it modeled it off of that and like your thoughts on cars carlos i i really i i I don't remember uh, yeah actually no i did want to see cars because i every yeah how you brought this up on the first uh well part one on this one that every single movie that came out i've always was interested in too and another thing i always felt that well pixar's never let me down except for yeah Cars 2, I didn't, I still haven't really finished it, but before that, since I think Ratatouille, every Pixar movie has came out literally a day or two before my birthday, so I was like, they can't let me down on my birthday, so, <laughs> but when, when Cars came out, I, I didn't see it in theaters, I ended up seeing it my senior year in class, because my 
teacher downloaded it. And we were watching it in class. Oh, was it Shweddy? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's how I saw Cars the first time. I really liked it a lot. Um, uh, even Geraldine didn't want to watch it. She was just kind of uh, no. talking Cars. Uh, so silly. <laughs> <laughs> she she, she kind of just it was dumb. And finally, I I, I brought her from Sanch here, and we saw a movie. She really loved it. I was like, see, I told you. I'll, I'll yeah. just out of all these years, I've been saying this movie's really good. It's a good. Storyline to that, yeah. How some of us were talking about, uh, Sanch, uh, talking about how it really does that whole what I mean, yeah, there's it's it's that hidden message of what history is, it's how much the roads of like highways impact the world. I mean, even what Roger Rabbit kind of talked about that too, right? Yeah, I, I like that. Like, kind of like they took like though Roger Rabbit, you know, cartoons and all that's fake, they really used. Um, some truth to that storyline of a Roger Rabbit. Like, what happens in, in that movie is that, like, the whole idea is, like, Doom, you know, he's part of Cloverleaf. They buy up the, the you know, the, the the red car, and they dismantle it so he could build freeways. And that's really what happened. Like, the the motor companies, like, you know, want, like, not a lot of people bought cars. It was all the luxury at the time. And they're like, how do we get people to start buying automobiles? Let's buy, you know, everybody's paying, like, what, like, at the time, like, what, five cents or a nickel, whatever, to get on a red car, a trolley. It's it's so much cheaper, it's efficient, like, who needs to buy a car when I could just, you know, pay this cheap amount and travel? So, they started buying them all up and destroying the, 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 the rail tracks everywhere. They're just destroying them, basically putting them out of business. People had no choice. The only way to get around was automobiles. And that's what happened, how the automobiles became something was... By the the motor companies destroying by force transportation, yeah. yeah, by force it forced people to have to buy cars, and it's kind of like the truth behind like Roger Rabbit, in which you know at the end the 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 tunes prevail, but in reality, like it just makes me wonder, like what would have happened if L A continued to still have like you know trolleys and shit? Yeah, yeah. the transportation would have been different. Well, it would have been a little bit nicer, but. I mean, we Moving almost from the horseback. Was we probably the, we yeah. almost could have had. Um, was it a, a a either it was a monorail or or, or like a, a subway, but like a like kind of like how Chicago has them and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, they they proposed and turned it down. I can't remember who the 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 full story, but like transportation would have been ten times better for us. Well, now we in LA, there's all monorails everywhere. But I mean, yeah, back then it. it it was all cars. Yeah, if you, it if you go to LA now, it, you could actually get from here to there. Now, east, from East LA, it's easier to get to like the heart of LA now. Yeah. Well, I heard that they're making this new tram where it uh, takes you from like here to San Francisco. In, like, oh yeah, in, like half hour or something. Yeah, they're they're proposing that. Like, I, I know that's a big old discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine, you but, uh, you, but it going, opens the door and you're like, "Yeah, San Francisco, <laughs> <laughs> awesome." We're going to San Francisco for three. We'll be there. Yeah, but going back into the whole cars thing, yeah, I, the whole the message on that too, like how how Lightning McQueen's kind of like a douche in the beginning, yeah, yeah. and then after that, like how he, he, because you know he, he's literally like a city, yeah, he's a city car, city folk, yeah, yeah, yeah city and folk. then the country is what gives him the heart, so mm-hmm. it's just like, oh. Oh, he had no heart. He was a cow. No, he was a tin man. And also, yeah. the girl car we got him more into it. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why Ex-city he stuck around. Car. It wasn't because of them. He stuck around because of her. Then he got to meet the rest of them. I, I just like how um, she had a tramp stamp. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, I was that's like, damn, Pixar, a little bit kind of, you know, risky. Well, I kept right? picturing Bonnie Hunt, too. I'm like, Ugh. oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not sexy at all, dude. Yeah, and then, uh, that sucks because they, you know, they couldn't use him for the second flick, but uh, George Carlin, remember, he was one oh, of the. Oh, yeah. Uh, the uh, he was the hippie, uh, like the, hey, man. And the main guy, too, the Hudson Hornet. Oh yeah, and he, he yeah he passed away too. Oh, is that why he wasn't in part two? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? They mentioned it in the beginning. Yeah, they mentioned it in the beginning. Uh, that's all like I remember. It was the beginning. Like yeah. He was the good guy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you sound like the Godfather right now. <laughs> but actually, more like freaking on the waterfront. You ever seen that film, Kirby on the waterfront? No. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a famous flick, dude, with Marlon Brando. It's like one of his, his like, made him a star. <laughs> I'll give you 50 bucks if you know the famous line from that movie. Uh, I'll meet you by the water. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Creedence song or something. I know, dude. I'm looking too far the ground. Bone on the mind. You ripped off Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, dude. Who? What about it? You ripped off Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Ooh. Well, what's going Not on here? Written. I'll meet you in Montauk. Uh, meet you true. in Montauk. He actually saw that movie because of me. It was a date. <laughs> it was sexy time <laughs> with Kirby right there. Huh? Time with Kirby. Uh, time with Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so car car is a it was a good flick. I think the, one of the things I honestly believe the effects um, really up the notch on that one because just the shininess of all the cars the and the, car, the detail. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the landscape on that one. Oh, was it was beautiful. Did you see the the Cadillacs? mountains yeah yeah, yeah. That were shaped like Cadillacs I was thinking about that I was like well why would they do that like or who would do that if, if the car is <laughs> deep, deep thoughts with Edgar here. <laughs> uh, it just reminded me of like the pyramids like you know it's it's like uh, like no one knows who built it and stuff like that yeah. but they're there well, I don't. I don't think there were actually pyramids like where they were built. I think that was just so, the so landscape, like yeah. the mountains were. Yeah. Just, it's, kind of, it's kind of like how some of the mountains were shaped in tires, I believe. Or yeah, yeah it was like yeah, the, yeah. the 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 front of a car, Sorry. like a Buick, Mount yeah. Rushmore kind of shape. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't like. I don't think it was like. There's ah, some well, scenes though that where the Cadillac tails are like there's like fifteen or twenty of them, like they're just all lined out. What the fuck? But it looks like. <laughs> 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 Like cracked out uh, cars and shit. <laughs> Love Cadillacs. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a Sir Mix a Lot, you know, like big booties and big Cadillacs. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had they had low rider cars. So. Yeah, there you go. Now they Cheech learn. Yeah, yeah, Cheech. Yeah. But he, they always, he's like the this, Disney's choice for any time they need a Mexican, yeah, they call him. Sure. <laughs> it's called, you know, Cheech. Mine, He'll do man. it. Like he was in Oliver oh, yeah. and Company. Oh, yeah, that's he's like the Chihuahua. Chihuahua, you know. you seen <laughs> Oliver, Oliver and company? company? Oh, look, he knows one. Uh-huh. <laughs> huh. Yeah, he was the Chihuahua. No way. Uh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Like, yeah, oh, he huh. was the hyena what? in Lion King. Oh, yeah. What? What? <laughs> really? He's like, my childhood is destroyed. <laughs> He's like, what? What's like it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, uh, Cars, great flick. Um, but I, I don't think it's, like, it's hard to rate, like, their top, but I would have to say Cars runs around somewhere in the middle w- with me. Oh, uh, it's uh, in the bottom for me. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed it a lot. I, I really do <laughs> like them. I'm <laughs> 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 sorry. I'm sorry for hating on that idea. Man, but, you yeah. don't like talking cars? Talking cars is just yeah, like, but don't you really really illogical to me. So do you want to punch the, the like the commercial for the Chevron? Is it the Chevron? Oh, yeah, oh the Chevron. Those oh, are talking oh, cars. Yeah. Well, there's talking tires and commercials too. There's a lot of talking shit. In well, there. I, I I remember I love like there was these old Disney shorts where there was like cars that like I remember it was actually this one car where a guy had the car and it had like the eyes and it didn't talk. You, you remember that, Lewis? Yeah. And it was cool. Like, and at one point somebody steals the car and it's like being chased by the cops and it crashes. But that's where they actually kind of got the idea for cars, like how they made it like more of. Um, Anamorphic, I think that's what it's called when you add like life to and yeah, like yeah. Human well, kids do that yeah. Shit. I remember when I was a kid and I look at cars and the the lights would go on. I'm like, eh, hey, the beat eyes. Yeah, and it looks like a face. Huh? <laughs> like, um, like I forgot where I was watching just watching something on TV where they were actually describing a lot of the headlights. They actually would describe them over like women. Like the headlights were actually like oh like, titties yeah. yeah oh yeah stuff like that it's like uh, Dumb and Dumber oh, oh yeah. that's oh. my favorite scene oh yeah let me see some boobies let me see some boobies damn it they got oh, well. you on that one yeah. PG thirteen that's Sorry. why I laughed I laughed even harder when that happened <laughs> they should have made cars like toys like when people come out they they just turn into regular cars 
Oh, oh like, cute, like Toy Story. Oh, it's like yeah. imagination and shit. It's like, see, they're not moving. <laughs> I, remember, I remember when that idea was brought up to me when I was a kid and I do that like all the time I'd be like turn around real quick and look at my X-Men and I'm like ah they're not moving <laughs> <laughs> I got that like after uh, watching what's the, what was the other one that the cover small movie? soldiers small soldiers oh Indian uh, in the cover yeah oh, the Indian in the cover I was like I'm gonna get one of those Look at this! This guy's pulling movies out. Nah, who knows? He knows. You can't do it for our podcast, but you can do it this one. <laughs> Kirby's top five. <laughs> top five movies. Go. Cover. What was it that he fought? Uh, a hamster or or he fought the Indian? Oh yeah, he fights something. Is it a rat or? Is, is it a rat? I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. I haven't yeah, seen that in a while. The one, the one thing I liked about that there was a cameo by RoboCop. Remember that? Oh, yeah. oh, when that stupid Indian kid, the the actual dirt, dirt, dot kid, <laughs> I don't know what, like, because there's two Indians. There's the Native American and there's the... Uh, <laughs> and there's the... Uh, I got it. That's <laughs> 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 I was fucked up. <laughs> oh, man, no <laughs> wonder they hate us here I know, dude. <laughs> I hate that kid. He's like, he's like, no! Yes! So I was like, no, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, 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 like, he was a, what, what a dick of a friend he was. Like, he tells him, like, the, you know, the rules and everything, and he doesn't even listen to him. Like, I'm gonna do what I want. It's not even his house. It's not even his cupboard. Like, the kid had a, a face that you just wanted to punch. Yeah. So I remember uh, that. I remember that. Like, it, like, you, do you ever meet like, someone with a face? Happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that felt the same way. He's all like, I hate that movie. Why'd I do that movie? No one likes me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what happened. He puts a bunch of toys in the cover <laughs> oh, he's, he's at the <laughs> later on <laughs> later on we find out it's M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> I was gonna say he's the one that like the comic expos that I was in at the end of the yeah. cover <laughs> he's got his own table <laughs> I know it's not even a table it's like a little box <laughs> It's outside by the trash. <laughs> on the floor. It's the cupboard that was in the movie. I know. <laughs> it's a, a bunch of steel shots from that movie. Oh, yeah. He just pulls out like the blanket and he like, strips it all. It's Twenty dollars like, for his shoes on the floor. Dude. Twenty dollars for his autograph. I know, dude. Uh, um. I feel bad. Like when we um, this weekend was the Stanley Kamikaze Expo in La- at the LA Convention Center. And half of the Brothers Bear podcast was there. And uh, Shweddy actually didn't go. But the one thing that... They have certain sections where you could actually see... I mean, you could meet, like, celebrities. Uh, there's no really A-list celebrities. A lot of B and C-list. And they're there. You could they're, they're, like, from usually some form of geek culture, sci-fi, whatever. But, it, I mean, it, it's kind of sad sometimes when you see a table and there's a celebrity there and there's nobody going up to them and uh, talking to them. Like I, I, was, I was mentioning earlier, there was one, it was some girl, I don't know if she was from The Amazing Race, and she looked like some rocker chick, and I saw her by herself. Each time I happened to walk by, no one was ever at her booth, and I was like, who the hell? One, who wants her autograph? Like, I don't know what, I don't watch that show, but then two, like... Why there? Like, no one's gonna care, you know? Like, I felt bad. I kind of felt bad, too, for the guy that... the <laughs> Mike TV was there from the original... The 70s... Uh, Willy Wonka. And oh, he was? Uh, yeah, he was there, but I mean... No one really recognized. No one want to care. It's like, people remember you for being a kid, not an adult. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like, if he did a lot of other films, then maybe. But if he's just, like, trying to capitalize on this one film, like... Who cares? Oh, like, like I don't want. I don't want this autograph. Like what's the name? Like, uh, like the girl from the Exorcist. Oh, oh Linda Blair. Blair. Yeah. yeah. But then I was like, doesn't even look like her. <laughs> <laughs> but she, when I walked by, she had a lot of people there. Yeah. Yeah. She her her table was packed because I mean that's what she's famous well, for. No, just me because like I don't really. Know oh, because so. you don't know her. And I'm like, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just talking about in general. It's just you. You don't know who she yeah, is. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't only only knew like Lou Ferrigno and that's about it. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like who's Stan Lee? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, well, Stan Stanley, like obviously. Yeah. Well, one that I also like, I was shocked that his like I didn't even recognize it until I look and I'm like he was sitting there. I was like, oh, what the hell was um? If you guys ever watched Thirty Rock, you guys watched Thirty oh, yeah. Rock, and it's um, 
forgot. Yeah, I know the, the guy. black guy. The one that's with Tracy Morgan, like one of the bodyguards. That's with Tracy Morgan. Yeah, that, that's with Tracy Morgan. Uh, what, what's his name? Um, I thought you were gonna stop right at, huh? at, at the Tony. black guy. <laughs> yeah. Nah, he's one of the bodyguards. Yeah, I saw him though. Yeah, he was there, and it's something like I guess it's from the show where it's for president, running for president, and like no one was even going up to his booth. But he was kind of in a weird area, like. Like, um, it wasn't even the signing area, too. Yeah, yeah, that was the one thing when I came across him, and I kind of felt bad. I'm like, no one's even going up to him. Like, I don't know, he's probably just sitting there all sad, like, mm, you know, updating like updating his status. I know, like, that's the one thing. I don't know, it's just, it's like, why did I get into this? <laughs> I don't even know why I went into this. Past actors, yeah. Oh, it was because we're talking about the Indian in the cupboard oh, kid, huh. the Indian who ruined the cupboard, man. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll, we'll pick some movie we talk about. That. <laughs> I know. Exactly. <laughs> I think people got that. <laughs> oh, God. Technically, that's what they are. They're Indians. Took me a minute, yeah. I yeah. think they're uh, native. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Indian in the cover. Wait, no. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> Toy Story. Native American in the cover. We were talking about cars. The first yes, one. Cars. <laughs> I think we were done about it. Yeah, we were. Because oh, it was because Kirby brought up Indian in the cover. Yeah. Dude, he was just pulling movies. Kirby's top five movies. Yeah, top, top five top. Indian in the cover. <laughs> 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 it overshadows every other film. <laughs> Godfather and uh, Citizen Kane. Citizen to him, yeah, it's all about. <clears throat> Yeah, we watched it in film oh, class. I fucking hated that movie. You yeah. fell asleep. Yeah. Well, I, I saw it after. Oh. Because uh, there's still a lot of hoopla around it, so I'm like... Yeah, because oh, it's considered AFI's number greatest one. number one film of all time. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Pixar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, they're black and white. We don't like black and white. <laughs> Have you seen uh, <laughs> Citizen Kane? <laughs> oh, he's picturing his candy canes. All <laughs> <laughs> like, the candy, citizens man. in the <laughs> having the citizens candy. brigade. Oh man! <laughs> like the citizens. Hey, look, it's citizens cane. Wait a second, there was no cane in citizens. <laughs> and then doesn't like um, I think Family Guy makes a joke too where like it's the he got in trouble with Blockbuster for recording on the VHS because it shows like Rosebud and then Peter comes in and he's like it's a sled <laughs> there I just saved you two hours of your life <laughs> but do you see that you know what I, I just want to mention something about that oh, wait well, I don't, okay anybody that knows about Citizen King see there's a part where the whole movie is based... On, I'm just going to spoil something here. It's an old movie. It doesn't really matter, so I'm going to spoil it. The basis of this film is at the very end, he, he, he's dying. On his, his last words are Rosebud. And there's, all, there's these reporters that are trying to figure out, what is Rosebud? Who is Rosebud? Who is this woman? Or what was Rosebud? Like, they're trying to figure out. They're thinking it's an actual person the whole time. And then at the very end, it is revealed that Rosebud was his uh, sled that w- when he was a child because he was poor. And then his father, like I guess, like didn't really sell him off, but gave him to a rich family to live a better life. And right there, that moment when he was given to that family, his childhood died, and that's what he was representing, like his childhood, like the sled. Rosebud was the sled because at the end, it shows like they're throwing, they're burning a bunch of stuff from like a scrapyard. And the sled, it says Rosebud. But the thing is, is that when he said these words, no one was around to hear it. So why is there a whole movie based upon this word that no one was around to even hear? So I don't know. I just wanted to throw that in there. I thought it was just kind of weird. <laughs> All right. So next up, I would have to say, let's just go in order. Uh, from Toy Story 1995, we jump to 1998 with A Bug's Life. Uh, I, that, I know a lot of people always talk about bug. Like, that's the one that... I know Cars seems to get the most hate, or... And Cars 2, of course. But for some reason, I don't know. I don't, like, when... I always ask people, what are your, your top whatever movies? And I, I never really hear anyone say Bugs Life being in the top of whatever. Which I, I do like Bugs Life a lot. I mean, that's Dave Foley right there as Flick. Yeah. Um, I think, you know... A Bug's Life, I believe they get a lot of rap because it's, it's, it's the, it's that, it's like 
Toy Story was such a huge flick. It's like any movie where that that part one is such a huge hit. It's like it's almost like it has that sequel, uh, like I can't think of the word, but it's just it's like it's almost like even though it's a total different film, it's kind of like a sequel. It's like all right, Toy Story was huge. Let's see what you're gonna do next. And now you're giving us picks. Uh, you, now you're giving us Bugs Life. So it already has a lot going for it. Where it's like yeah, it's ex- it has, it has high a big expect- following, yeah. expectation. It's like oh, it's so huge. Yeah, we're talking about Bugs Life. Um, Shweddy had actually stepped out. For, uh, he had a phone call. But yeah, so it's just like it already has that going for it. So like I, I mean, I know I had that because that was my. That's always been my issue with every single Pixar film. Is it's not Toy Story. It's not Toy Story. And that's what happened when I saw the trailer for Bugs Life. I was like, okay, this is just this horrible. It looks stupid. I don't, don't want to see this. I'm like, it's not Toy Story. I'd rather see a Toy Story 2. So, and I mean, Lasseter was on board for, uh, and Lasseter is like the, the head guy basically almost behind like the creative team of Pixar. And he did A Bug's Life. And in reality, like, I enjoyed A Bug's Life. I mean, I love like James Woods as the, the grasshopper, as Hopper. You know, um, it, was a good, it was a good concept for a film because it, what I loved about that movie is it, rem- it, it it was it reminded me of like Three Amigos and Galaxy Quest, mm. um, both great films. It's like where these people are mistaken for something and they're there and they think they're putting on a show and the whole time they they're just there to save. You know, it's exactly if you ever seen Galaxy Quest or Three Amigos, it's that's the Wait, whole story. Who did you say was Hopper? Um, no, did I? Who the hell did I just you say? You said Woods. James Woods. I was like, Wait, no, it's uh, Kevin Spacey. What? No, it's James Woods. James Woods, yeah. Yeah, IMDb this mug. I'm on, I'm on IMDb right well, now. Oh, no, yeah, it is Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey? Yeah, I thought it was James Woods. No, that's... Oh, wait, yeah, it is. Yeah, James Woods did, did something else, didn't Oh, he? dude, I've been feel wrong for once. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Damn, well, they, they kind of sound alike. I actually, for this long, this time, I actually thought it was... Man, I feel... I'm going to cry now. <laughs> <laughs> Morgan Freeman. <laughs> well, they hey, they have similar voices. I mean, it's not like I mean, they hey, well, they, hey, I'm not. You can't get away with that. There, you could see their face. <laughs> oh, my, with me, it was a voice, <laughs> and they're they're a grasshopper. <laughs> but yeah, that um, I think I, I saw a Bugs Life only like once, and I just remember uh, ants came out around that same time. Oh was yeah, that was that whole thing. Fucking suck. It was Sylvester Stallone, right? Yeah, and Woody Allen. And... J Lo was in that one. Yeah, the one thing I think that was just weird was Woody Allen as a as a like it was kind of weird to hear him as a cartoon character, like or a CG character. But like, I don't think he really. It was just weird, like a neurotic like character in a cartoon for kids. Like I felt like it was more like an adult movie. It wasn't really a kids flick. It wasn't. I mean, it was aimed for kids, but that one had it was more. It was dark, kind yeah. of. A bug's life? No, ants. Oh. And I hated the animation. I think that's really what hurt it. Was awful, the man. animation was terrible. Ter- terrible. Terrible. I mean, terrible. Uh, DreamWorks, DreamWorks is trying. Yeah. I mean, now recently, within the last couple of years, oh. Dream- DreamWorks is finally, you know, their animation hit studio. After hit. But before that, DreamWorks couldn't make a decent animation movie, like yeah. a CG movie. Mm-hmm. As to Pixar, yeah, everything they came out with was a hit. And still is. Yeah, yeah well, uh, Bugs Life was a hit for them. It, it no, mean, no, I'm not, yeah. It, even though a lot of people, either you, some do like uh, Bugs Life, and there's some that I've met that don't like Bugs Life at all. I, I love B- Bugs Life. I mean, now, I mean, as a kid, I didn't know who, who did the voice scene of who, you know, of what character, but not to know each person, it's like, ah, oh, damn, like, Dennis Leary, as, uh, what is it? What's that? The ladybug character. I forgot his name. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a good one. Like, Lewis. What's the name? What? Of the ladybug. From Bugs Life. Bugs Life. Francis? Oh, Francis. Francis. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I guess so. Oh, yeah. wow. But still, like, it, Dennis Leary's, like, personality fit Francis's character perfect because him being pissed off that he was always getting called, you know, a lady for that ladybug. So it's just how they were smart to get, like, these certain people to play these certain roles. I like the Heimlich, right? That was the... Oh, yeah. The caterpillar. The, oh, my little caterpillar. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a butterfly. Oh. Is that because the movie where they would drink out of like a little drop of water? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was so drunk. Like the, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hey, I said no salt. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm into a poo poo platter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That one, that one's cool. I like that because it was cool, like how you, you got to see the world of like the bugs where yeah. they go yeah. to the city. There's like you see the big old spider walking about. Like it was cool to see that. <laughs> it was a, it was something new, but I it, I just I don't the ants. I didn't like their design. That was my issue with the film was the ants looked weird to me. I think the whole thing was when they were really blue. Soft. I think the, the whole movie was really really soft. It was soft in my eyes. Like, what do you mean soft? I saw, it was like. <laughs> I, don't know how to, I don't know how to say that with words, but I was just looking at it. Squinting? Squint, yeah. Squint. Like, Slight you ever, squint. like, the, the face he's making is like when you're at a fast food joint and you're trying to look at the menu and you're squinting your eyes, you're like, you're like what? Or uh. you're like driving through fog. Like, it's just very soft. <laughs> <laughs> Silent Hill? So, yeah. That one's a hard game to play, man. Oh, dude. I shit, shit my pants, like, I don't know how many times. Dude, Silent Hill, dude, I consider, that is the scariest game of all time. I don't even care. I don't know. I like Phil Friend. Do you guys ever play Phil Friend? I think, I know. Uh, Silent Hill, I think, first is one. ten yeah, times even more? scarier. Oh, I like Phil Friend. People because, see, Silent Hill, like, I remember I got it for a Christmas, and I remember for, because I think you bought it for me, yeah, right? Yeah, I bought it for Yeah, you. um, Carlos bought it for me, and... That two week, you know, you, that's when you stay up all late. You know, yeah, you you yeah. don't sleep. You know, the two week break, you know, Christmas. Up, yeah. I couldn't play it by myself at night. Mm-hmm. It was too scary because I think the clever part about that game of being Silent Hill was it's quiet in the game, and then for some apparent reason, it's like someone bangs a pipe, and you're like, oh crap! Like you get freaked out, or like things just. I mean, remember the the school? I think the school was with the little kids. Yeah. Yeah. Right when you walk in a room, you turn off your flashlight. And all you hear, and that's your radio signaling that there's monsters yeah. in the room. And all you hear, and then you're like, oh, crap, what the hell's in here? And then they walk right by you. Like, you can see a little small shadow. And you're like, oh, God. I couldn't play. But I remember I would have to wait till Carlos got home from school or whoever it was. And I'll be like, okay, Carlos is home. Now I can play this game. Even if he, I was asleep on the floor or something. Oh, dude. Yeah. I couldn't. <laughs> Remember when, when it was Silent Hill, the room? Oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah, All right. So we had just got... It was the, the first uh, PlayStation 2 game, right? No, I mean not the first. I'm sorry. It was like the last PlayStation 2 game, no, I think. Was, no. was it PlayStation 2 or... or? No, okay. Yeah, it was PlayStation 2. It's the one where it takes place a lot in the room and you go through a hole in the wall. Yeah. So we got it and I remember that's when Allie was like, I, we had just kind of like met her or whatever. Like she had just popped into my life actually. So we're trying to explain to Allie. Allie's my wife again. Um, we were trying to explain to her like, oh, this game is scary. You got to watch this, watch this, watch this. And, and we're like trying to find things that are scary because this is the first time me and Carlos like are playing. Like a half hour into yeah. the game. And she's like, I'm going home. Yeah. And we're like, oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. It's going to be scary. Come on, wait. And she wa- we I hear her, like we're in my room and I hear her close the door. And right when she leaves, something in the game happens and scares the hell out of me. <laughs> we're like, ah! We're like, ah! We're like, damn it, she missed it. And like, and then I remember, man, we got so scared. <laughs> but yeah, like Silent Hill, seriously, I, I think it, it's it's the scariest game. There's no way you can play that by yourself. And like, they really need to do an HD version of the first. Mm. first they did one. of the first one. I think they no, did. they only did two and three. Oh, I could have sworn they, they consider did. part two the best Silent Hill game. Why? Uh, one's still the best. I think one is. is I think the reason why they 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 say Silent. Hill 2 is one of the, the best ones because that brought the most iconic Silent Hill character of all time. That's the one that introduced oh, Pyramid Head. Oh, yeah, Pyramid Head. Yeah, yeah. So because of that, when you think Silent Hill, you think Pyramid Head, and I think that's why it's always labeled as the greatest one out of all of them, I, out of the series. And I think the reason why, too, is because it's considered the darkest out of all the series. Because yeah. the first one, he Harry is just trapped in a world looking for his daughter. Yeah. And that's it. He's just he's he's just at the wrong place at the wrong time in the sense where he finds this little girl, takes her in, and next thing you know, his like you know, his wife dies, and now he's just trapped in this land looking for this girl. The second one, the character, he is in Silent Hill because he's just living through hell for what he did, and in the end, like he's looking, he gets a letter from his dead wife, like that's from four years ago, and she's been. I mean, no, she he gets a letter saying, "Hey, I'm in Silent Hill." And she's been dead four years. So he's basically, this is his hell. He's living in torment because at the very end, you find out because she's sick 
and he smothers her with the pillow. And there's a scene, like, you see it, it's kind of like, I think he's watching, like, a VHS tape of himself, kind of weird, and you see it, and then he gets a pillow and smothers her and kills her. So he's living in his own personal hell the whole time. And that's what that game is. It's, like, considered one of the darkest of all the Silent Hill games. And then part three is, as always, it's, like, it always repeats in, in like, it always goes back to three in the first one. Like, I, I made a comment about this long ago where part three is a continuation from the first game. What? Similar to what you're playing. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. I'm at 100%. Yeah, and the first one is the the daughter. The first one, the the girl you're trying to find in the first part one. Now she's yeah, she, up. she's growing up mm-hmm. in part three. Um, I know this film that's going to be coming out in on Halloween, around Halloween time is uh, more of the part three of the game. I mean, I'm hoping... I, I actually enjoyed part one. There are some moments that are kind of like boring but it's it's they, it's considered one of the better adaptions of a video game because they stayed almost true yeah they had to do some stuff yeah, but there were some I mean, things they had to change but I, I understood why they had to change it just for hollywood purposes so. yeah because how can you adapt that into a movie it's hard you know i know that's not a pixar movie but <laughs> i mean it's still like it i mean hell silent hill i mean if if you if you have a PlayStation Three, you could actually download it on the on the, the the store. It's like fourteen bucks. I have it downloaded, and if you can play it, yeah, the mechanics of the game would be a little off because some of you are, are used to flow fluid motion and you know these first person shooter games. But just you know, sometimes playing some of these classic games, like it, some of them just tend to be better than the newer ones. I mean, I'm more of a classic gamer. I mean, all these SquareSoft games, like you know. Chrono Trigger and freaking Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy 3 in reality is Final Fantasy 6. Like these are real great like games and if you know Earthbound, I know it's not SquareSoft, but Earthbound was another great game. And a lot of these are RPGs, but they're just like considered some of the best. Like Chrono Trigger is another one. I mean, yes, yeah, uh, Symphony of Night, that's a Castlevania game for oh, PlayStation. Man, that's like- Ultimate. Yeah, you yeah. play it. Oh, Symphony of Night, man. Seriously, yes. the the gameplay, the story, the music, everything so nice. about that game, dude, was just the graphics to that. Like, we, oh, that. it was we beautiful. Recently, we recently saw a Frankenstein Symphony yeah. of Night unopened. Was yeah, uh, seventy bucks. bucks. I think it was like seventy, Eight, seventy-eight bucks. Seventy-five or eighty-five bucks is Call of Duty right now. That is not bad. Think about it. That game at the time, Nelson bought it when it was brand new, was sixty dollars. So you're only paying 15 more bucks than for, for brand new, for yeah, an actual, open. yeah, for an actual game yeah. that is, 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 is considered a classic. It's like, I don't know. It, 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 oh my gosh. Like, I, how I want to go get that as a collector's item, like Symphony of Night. And what, what I loved about that game is that once you passed it, you played it again, but instead it was in a mirror world. It was like upside down. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And now that, oh, Symphony of Night was, I think. It's amazing. It, I mean, the Caf- Castlevania series in, in general, I just, I've always loved it, but that, that was like one of the best. That, yeah. the Castle, that game ranks up there with like a Link to the Past, like a oh, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, you know, like, like it's one of those games that it doesn't matter how much time passes. Like, it's always going to be considered yeah. a great game. Yeah. It's like, there's certain movies, like, like, I was thinking about that the other day. Like, there's certain movies, it's like, is it going to have longevity? Like, like I know Shweddy had made a reference to one of my posters on my wall. It's Back to the Future. Back to the Future is always going to have longevity. Like, yeah, there's some kids right now who's like, what's Back to the Future? Mm-hmm. Kirby, you've seen Back to the Future, right? Yes, I actually uh, Okay. Yeah. Um... You're but it's old. out of this house right I know. Now. <laughs> I'm like, get out of here. Um, Back to the Future has is gonna have longevity. It's always gonna go. You know, like, but there's certain other films like, like it makes me wonder, like, you know, um, like for instance, like The Hangover. Like, is that gonna be like an Animal House where like it's always gonna be considered a great comedy where it's gonna just last? Like, whenever you think of great comedies, you always go back to Animal House. Like people would always say, oh, Animal House is considered one of the greatest comedies because it's a, one of those R-rated films. You know, like, is, is like, you know, people say that. Is Hangover going to be that? It's like, for instance, like, Something About Mary. It seemed like it was going to be that for a while, but it's kind of, like, starting to die down. Like, not a lot of this new generation is taking in on this film. So, it makes me wonder, like, what films are going to have longevity? And that's, um, I don't even know where I was going with this. <laughs> what movie was I originally talking about? Three, three Amigos. No. <laughs> three Amigos. I don't know. But regardless, that's, that's the Pixar story. That's the Pixar story. 
<laughs> Again, we uh, we. It's just you know what. There's so much about Pixar that I want. I was actually want, I wanted to get into Ratatouille, but we're already coming into it. <laughs> yeah, it, it is so hard. Little, Look, you know Ratatouille. what? We're not going to get into Ratatouille on this one because Ratatouille is a Brad Bird film, and I think we should just discuss fully on Brad Bird. I mean, Brad Bird, this guy. Um, if I remember, who was it? Someone had told him that this guy is like the next like. I can't remember. I, you guys take the mic. I gotta find it. <laughs> uh, are we plugging in there? No, no, no. Just no, continue, plug- continue talking. About plugging in. <laughs> uh, well, since we're not gonna talk about, well, wait, hold on. You, what was your thoughts on Bugs Life? <laughs> I thought it was soft. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, you already said that. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Which one was soft? first, Ants or Bugs Life? Ants. They came on rough, like. They came out within the same time frame, like year. Uh, Ants came out after. Was it? Yeah, a little bit after. I just remember though they were like they ants look more like ants and bugs life. They didn't look like ants. Oh, found it. Okay, he has been referred to by some as the modern day Walt Disney. What? Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> modern day nerd, not better, but like considered <laughs> as a, of our generation. Because mm-hmm. Brad Bird, this guy, he he is a great storyteller. Like The Incredibles and then Ratatouille, Iron Giant, like that. Uh, that's yeah. one of the last like animated films. That's like one of the best. Like, like I honestly, it's like one of my favorite animated films is The Iron Giant. Mm, like I, cool. I have yet to find another movie that is like that. That is just like one is just like so touching, makes you fall in love with the characters, and then just makes you ball like a little baby. Aww. Like, seriously, like... Robot gets feelings. <laughs> yeah, like, you, you've seen The Iron Giant, no, right? I haven't. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, that, that movie... There, there is one thing about that flick, is the ending of that movie is yeah. considered one of the greatest, like... You, you spend so much time in this movie, like... Like, you're, th- these characters, like, you fall in love. Like, there's this little boy. His name is Holgarth Hughes. And he's all about, like, he loves science fiction. He's just about the outer, outer space. And like Orson <laughs> Welles kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and a, a robot crash lands in, like, in his, basically is, like, his hometown. And he finds this robot. He actually saves this robot because there's, like, a transformer uh, uh, tower plan with, like, all the, and he, the, he get the, the iron giant walks into it and he's, like, getting electrocuted. And the kid... Stupid robot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and the kid shuts it off. And the robot remembers it and saves him. And at this point, it kind of, like, becomes his best friend. Like, this kid, he's just kind of alien. Like, he never really shows him having friends. It's like a Tin Man had no heart. Right? Yeah, because... Uh, and, and the kid just starts teaching this robot things. Because the robot doesn't really understand things. One, he has, like, a bump on his head. And it's why he doesn't remember why he's even on the planet. Why he's there or anything. Doesn't even know who he is. So... The, the kid tries to teach him things. He tries to teach him yeah. about, like, yeah, like, love, like, death. Because at one point, they're, right. they're always in the forest. And a gunshot goes off. And then they, there's a deer laying in there dead. And the robot doesn't understand. And the kid yells at him, like, no, it's dead. Don't touch yeah, he it. Tried, yeah, he tries you know, and him. he says that there's dead. Like, there's no more life. And the robot, like, doesn't understand. Like, what is this, you know? And there's even parts where, like, um, like he's hiding the robot. And the kid gives him comics. And he's like, he's like, here, there's these, there's like, oh, there's this comic called Atomo, and then he's like, Atomo, you know? And he's like, yeah, it's this bad robot, and it's a robot on the cover. That- Baby Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he has like a deep voice, like, Atomo. Which is, uh... Um, what's his, uh, Riddick, the guy with bald head. Uh, Fast and the Triple Furious. X. Yes, that guy, Triple X. <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Vin Diesel. There, there you go, go Vin Diesel. Um... What you call it? So, <laughs> and, and like he shows him these comics, and then like he he's telling him like who Atomo is, this other robot who destroys world and this and that, and he's like, oh, don't worry, you're you're not him. You're he's like you're more like Superman. You know, he's the hero. He saves the day and this and that. So he's trying to point out like you know that's who you are. You're Superman, and and like l- later on like he's, he kind of mentions it like he, he tells him like you know you don't have to be this bad robot you choose who you want to be you know like that's who you he's like you don't have to be what someone tells you you choose who you want to be and then there's even like later on where like the kid's playing with like this little toy gun and he's like shooting at the robot and he's like come on come on Atomo he's like no no Atomo 
And then he's like, oh, I'm Superman. You know, and he's like, oh. Yeah. But then that, that's when, like, he pulls the gun, the fake gun to the robot, and then something triggers in his mind, and he becomes a weapon and almost kills the kid. And he realizes, like, the weapon's like, oh, he, he kind of s- slowly starts to remember. And later on, there's this guy, his name is a, uh, Kent Mansley. He's, like, from the government. And this guy's just a wacko. Like, he wants to prove there's aliens. And he just sees evil. Evil from this alien. That's all he sees is, is evil. And well, it's alien. Yeah, like you know, there's there's yeah. no there's no nothing. Just destroy, destroy, destroy. Mm-hmm. That's all he is. You know, it's it's the era of that time with like the whole Cold War and everything. That's all it is. It's like well, there's always that bad guy in that movie, like Avatar. It reminds me of that. Yeah, older guy. and then that's all it is. He just wants to destroy this yeah. robot, and Relentless. they're just trying to prove that this thing is is good. And at one point, like stupid science. Huh? Yeah, he comes into the town and he just causes causes a lot of havoc, and he finally gets the army to believe that there is a giant robot in the town and that's when the army starts to attack at this point the robot's just trying to keep the kids safe because he has them with them and um at one point they're flying and jets come and he even at one point he his eyes turn in the weapons like he wants to shoot the and he goes nope you know, and he, he shakes his head, no, <laughs> and he doesn't shoot the planes because he doesn't want to be a weapon. He doesn't want to kill. He understands that. And then he gets actually hit. They crash land and he sees the kid and he's just laying there motionless. And he remembers like the deer and he thinks he oh, died. he's dead. At that point, the, the little dent in his head pops like back he, to normal. He gets really pissed off. And he's yeah. Just like, and then at that point, he becomes that weapon and just starts destroying until finally he sees the little kid and he notices the kid's alive. And then that's when they're like the, the kid stops him, and in one this other guy named Dean, he's like a beatnik, tells the army like he's he's not you know he's only attacking because you're attacking it. Stop shooting it. And this Kent Masley guy, this government guy, is like no no no, he's evil and stuff. And the greatest scene like leads up to this moment where the the Kent Masley tells the army, oh the kid's dead, so that's why the army starts attacking it. In which they find out it's a lie, and the. The Kent Mansley's like, there's only one way to destroy it. It's an atom bomb. We got to destroy it. And there's like, you know, are you, what are you mad? Like, what are you crazy? He's like, no. He's like, we'll lure it out of here. Well, at one point, when the robot comes, they see they have the kid. The army's like, oh, stand down. He has the kid. He's like, it's a trap. He's like, what are you crazy? He's like, it's a trap. And then he grabs the walkie from him. And then there's like a ship off the island. And he says, he's like, fire the missile. And I'm actually, I'm just going to read down. I wrote down the script because it's like so like, uh oh. I mean, every time we... I, I get chills, but it's just, like, great. <laughs> and um, I'm actually going to try to read it in character of all the, the freaking characters. Because it's, like, uh, Kent Mansley, he just grabs the... He grabs the walk and he goes, He's like, launch the missile now! And the general is like, That missile is targeted to the giant's current position. Where's the giant, Mansley? Uh, we can duck and cover. There's a, a fallout shot not far from him. There's no way to survive this. Um, You mean we're all going to... To die, Mansley, for our country. Screw our country! I want to live! Then the siren goes off them. People just around. The Silent Hill siren? Yeah. Oh. Everybody's like, oh my gosh. And then, you know, freaking out. And then ha- you know, Hogarth, the little boy, walks up to the to the giant. Because the giant's kind of, like, confused. And he tells him, you know, and he goes, The missile, when it comes down, everyone will die. Everyone's, like, freaking out. Everyone... And then the, his mom tells the, the dean, he's like, shouldn't we get to a shelter? And he's like, it wouldn't matter. And then that's when the giant looks around and sees all the people sad and crying. And then the giant, he, he looks at him, at, at Hogarth, and he goes, I fix. And then Hogarth, like, giant? He goes, and then this was a, a, a thing where earlier in the movie where Hogarth was trying to go home. And the giant was following him. And then he told the giant, like, no, giant, you know. You stay, stay, I go, you stay, no following. So the the giant tells Hogarth, he goes, he goes, Hogarth, you stay, I go, no following. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the giant, yeah, the giant just takes off. And Hogarth just looks at him and says, I love you. And then as the giant is flying to the atomic missile, because it's going to aim towards the giant. And it would hit the town. As he's following, he hears in his head the kid. He's like, you choose who you want to be. And then the giant closes his eyes and says, Superman. And boom, hits the missile and just destroys, you know, everything. And that moment, 
always freaking like I got chills saying it right now but always makes me freaking cry when I watch that movie because it is so touching because just that movie where it's like the little kid's like you choose who you want to be and then the, the giant just says Superman and it's almost like Christ like in a sense where like he's sacrificing himself to save all these because of this stupid guy's decision the sin to kill everybody well, it's that old idea of yeah war yeah, yeah, you know, and then the the giant like sacrifices himself, and you know. But the cool thing, if you haven't seen the movie, is like at the very end, um, the like they build a statue for the kid. I mean, the, for the robot and stuff. And the army delivers a package to the little boy. He's like, this was the last remaining piece that they could find, and it's like a weird screw. And at night, the screw starts to blink, and then the kid lets it go out the window, and it starts rolling away. And what it is is early in the film when a train hit the robot. Um, it fell apart and it just pieced itself together. So you, it starts traveling like, you know, it goes like to the Arctic and you see like the robot's head and it's piecing itself back together. Mm. So the robot's still alive mm. and it just smiles and it ends. And it's just like, oh, that was awesome. Like, I wish they would make a sequel. But there's some stuff that questions arise from that film is like, where did this robot come from? Yeah, I recently read that. And yeah, I like who, who sent the robot? And there actually is a deleted scene where, in the robot's memory, he re- he sees himself on a planet with a bunch of other Iron Giants destroying the planet. Mm. And it was sent by a race. So, in reality, there could be a sequel to this where the That's Iron right. Giant is built together and this race, whoever it was, sent this robot, is now trying to finish the job. Mm. And he has to protect us now. It sounds like Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball? Dragon Ball? Going super sane on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know the same story. They send Goku to destroy the world. You guys know about Dragon Ball, right? Mm-hmm. I know of it. I've just never really watched it. I never got into yeah, it. Yeah, the story the same thing. They send Goku to destroy the world because Super Saiyans, um, that's what they do. They destroy the world and then they sell it to Frieza, which this is later on, but they sell it to Frieza for money. So, but their, their um, job is to go to, because they're so like crazy and good at battling because they're the best in the universe that they can destroy the world like this you know yeah so they go do that clean out the world so they send sometimes they send infants and they, they basically grow up there but they destroy the world while they grow up but this guy they sends goku he's he's there and he's crazy and um the, the grandpa which his name's gohan is training him how to fight but at the same time at, at this point i guess goku falls and hits his head forgets about everything and then grandpa starts teaching him about be, basically being a human yeah. And so he goes up to be different. That's how his Super Saiyan is not as like Vegeta, or whatever, because Vegeta was a crazy fucker. And then, yeah, that's basically the same. It's like a, an old idea dying, a new idea rising. Basically, the, the, the Christ consciousness in a sense, yeah. like where where ascension is is kind of like what we're leading towards. Yeah. Because I always think about that too, like robots and shit, and why do they think and. You know, what are they <laughs> <laughs> what are they thinking? Like, why? Why, well, why are movies? Why are people making movies of robots that have like emotion? Know, have that get emotion? That yeah. learn emotion? You know, like like it's I just robot. it's just crazy. I robot. I robot another one. AI. Like that. Hmm. AI. You can name pretty much all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Wally. Short circuit. Short circuit. <laughs> <AI. Bachucos. laughs> but yeah, I think it's just nuts. Like, uh, I get to the point where I'm like, you know. Well, Am I a robot? You know, <laughs> who created me? And like, I'm like this intelligent design and shit. You know, intelligent. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got five fingers. How does that fucking work, man? I don't know. Do you know uh, five is uh, short for phi, which is a uh, three point one four. The the uh, infinite twirling out and the infinite twirling in is like a number that that can't times you can't times by it or whatever. It's like one. Yeah. One solid number. Though. No. Yeah, and uh, it's it's spelled uh, it's pronounced it's, it's uh, was found by a guy named Fibonacci, and it's called the Fibonacci sequence. So it's phi, like it for short. Uh, yeah. Uh, F I F I F I. And then uh, F Y E. If you spell five, it's F F I V E, and uh, the V is the Roman number for five. Yeah. And then E is the fifth uh, fifth number, fifth letter in the. Oh wow. Five fingers, man. <laughs> How does that work? Intelligent design. Yeah. <laughs> well, this was a very interesting look at all the Pixar movies. <laughs> yeah. Uh, before we head out, we have uh, Shweddy has brought us a new segment called Song of the Week. So he's going to give us a little. Beep, 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 uh, beep. 
Yes. Oh, wait, wait, could I plug in the, the, the show really quick? Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, we're, we're, this isn't, it's just a, it's yeah, not just ending out from there. Plug it in. Yeah, it will end no, the plugins are the very end. Oh, okay. It's huh. right, the plugins are at the tail end, but the song of the week is before the plug. Well, whatever. Regardless, <laughs> whatever. I'll, still, I'll still keep going. This, we're, this is our first time doing this. But, song of the week, uh, uh, Shweddy's going to talk about it. It's a new segment where... We introduce you to new music, nothing that's really mainstream, not something you would find on, for those of our LA listeners, uh, on K-Rock or Star or Kiss FM, nothing of that sort, bands that really, we're not going to be playing anything that's like by, like, you know, No Doubt or even more mainstream bands like Radiohead. I mean, unless it's really rare, that's something that no one knows about, we're trying to introduce you to new acts, new artists that you may not really find on your own. So this is our Song of the Week by Shweddy. Song of the Week is by a band called uh, The Two Bears. Two Bears are from uh, London, England. It uh, consists of two guys. Uh, one guy is Joe Goddard. He's uh, he's in another band called Hot Chip. They're pretty big around the uh, area. The oh, I know. England area, yeah, right? Yeah, Hot Chip. Is. Yeah. Are they Hot Chip? They're Hot <laughs> Chip, man. Hot <laughs> Chip. But uh, they they play like indie tronica, house dance, rave, alternative dance. They're they're mm-hmm. like DJs and shit, but they they make their own uh, lyrics and stuff. They don't they don't uh, dub anything else. But yeah, it's called um, it's called Bear Hug because I want a bear hug. Yeah. So stay tuned. Right after the podcast, we'll go. It would go play right into the song. So now it is time for our plugins. And first and foremost, we have plugins from Mr. Bear. Carlos Medrano. Hey guys, uh, last week I think I threw it out there, but if I didn't, I'm just gonna keep repeating it. Next week, September 26, I did post the flyer on the page, which was the Refried Comedy Show. All those comics on that sh- uh, bill, I believe there's six of them, all very funny comedians, all good comedians that I've seen in clubs and you know small little places that when they're trying to work out material. Every single one of those comics are very good friends of mine. They're funny. I, I mean, I'm glad I actually have the, the headliner, which is Steve Trevino, who actually has a um, one-hour special debuting on Showtime October 4th. I'm not sure on the timing. But anyways, yeah, September 26th, next Wednesday at 8 p.m. The show will start. Doors open at 7. Affordable comedy for 5 bucks. No two-drink minimum. And just please come down, support, have a good time. It's just gonna, it's gonna be a really good lineup that you're not gonna want to miss out on. And this is the third one I've done. I've had a blast the first two times, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have another blast on this third one. I'd appreciate it, even if you didn't know who I am. But if you know, you know, Santos Sanchez, Sanch, uh, he's gonna be there. He'll seat you. You know, he's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be, I'll be helping him out seating. Uh, Shweddy, are you gonna, are you gonna? Be there again or no? Yeah, we'll see. Well, it's like right across the street from it. So yeah, we'll so pos- I mean, if you want to meet the, the Brothers Bear podcast cast, uh, we'll all be there. And then also, too, I'm assuming the Bridgetown podcast will be representing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, you could actually meet both podcasts from the, the Brothers Bear podcast and the Bridgetown podcast will be in person, live, they're signing autographs, just like the, <laughs> the Comic Con people, you know, in our own little corner, we'll have Maybe our alone. own. Like, <laughs> I don't know, we'll have headshots for us to sign. Uh, the you know. Indian and the cover guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a $40 Polaroid picture. Nah. Um, yeah, we'll be representing um, Shweddy, you got any plugins or anything? Um, anything, where are you going to be at this week? This week, uh, I'm going to be at, uh, uh, no, I ain't got no plugins. <laughs> Uh, likewise, myself, uh, only plugins I got is just continue to, uh, share, like, uh, spread the word of the Brothers Bear podcast. We like, you know, like our page, you know, share it with your friends. Uh, we just, we talk about everything in an, in, uh, that's in within, I guess you could say, you know, entertainment, geek culture. I mean, but we even talk about our, ourselves. Um, I, next week we're actually going to go into, uh, Shweddy's uh, history of uh, backyard wrestling. Oh yeah! <laughs> so next week, stay tuned for uh, that's just a little tease to next week's episode. Uh, during high school uh, is when Shweddy used to be called Tiny, and uh, he Tiny uh, balls. yeah, <laughs> and he was uh, into backyard wrestling, and that's kind of how 
I, I found out shortly after because somebody gave me a cassette tape to edit and it was of you guys back at wrestling and something in that tape happened and I'd rather wait till next week when he explains it. Uh, he probably has no idea what I'm saying exactly at the moment, but something major happened and I always show my little brother and he's like, oh, what the hell? And it's just kind of funny. But uh, yeah, so before we close out and we go into the the song of the week well, let's just want to give thanks to the bridgetown podcast for sitting in on our podcast Thank you know you. there's uh lewis and kirby uh and kirby over here with his movie knowledge probably <laughs> out of nowhere sometimes it happens <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it happens yeah i'm actually just looking up everything <laughs> i know so yeah so it was, it was great uh, we had an audience and you know uh, I never even know how to freaking close the damn show. Every week, regardless, stay tuned for the song of the week afterwards, and that's another episode in the bag. Yep, yep, yep.
<laughs> no, I just like drooling. <laughs> 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 Facebook, this is my favorite commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Kirby's top five commercials of Carlos Jr. and Jack in a Box. What's this? Number one. Oh, That's the, the video. Uh, oh. 